In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord, and hearty welcome to you, dear brothers and sisters, for the reflections of the fourth Sunday of the Lent, 19th March 2023. The first reading is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verses 1, 6 to 7, 10 to 13. The second reading from letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 5, 8 to 14. And the gospel reading is from St. John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. The God in whom we believe is light. No darkness can overcome this light. Those who walk in this light will never stumble. Saul, the first king of Israel, could not do it. Therefore God chooses David as his successor. He who was chosen to shepherd the people of Israel experienced God as the good divine shepherd. The message is clear. Those who are chosen by God are called to walk in the light in order to be called as the children of light. That is our identity. We are all thinking beings, but the call to think like God is a great challenge. The first reading, my dear brothers and sisters, narrates how David is chosen by God and is anointed by Samuel, the last judge and the first prophet. Samuel grieves over the death of Saul for long, but the Lord says that he has rejected Saul and has chosen David, son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite. Samuel was impressed by the outward looks of Eliab, the first son of Jesse. But the Lord, who looks at the heart of the person, rejected him. Humans do not possess the ability to read the hearts of others. God alone possesses this quality. The tendency to go by external appearance causes rifts and conflicts. The Bible says David was ruddy, handsome and had beautiful eyes. His own father Jesse did not consider him worthy of becoming a king. But the Lord commanded Samuel to rise and anoint him. We take note that at that moment the Spirit of the Lord descended mightily upon David and remained with him. Yes, David was the Lord's chosen and the anointed one. God had made David his own because God is fully in charge of his people. The responsorial psalm presents to us the famous Divine Shepherd Psalm. King David chosen to shepherd the people of Israel, envisages God as the real shepherd. The psalm goes along very well with the first reading. God leads David, guides him in right paths, protects him against all dangers and enables him to partake of the family banquet. David. The psalmist is exuberant that he will live in the presence of God forever, for length of days. He does not lack anything and thus he celebrates God's providence. The second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. In reality, it could have been written sometime between 80 to 180. Someone from the Pauline circle writes it in Paul's name. He wants to tell his readers that Christians cannot anymore live like the Gentiles. Therefore, he invites them and us subsequently to live as children of light. Those who are in light bear fruits 
that are found in all that is good, right and true. The believers have to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Whatever evil is done in darkness will be exposed by the light. The author of the Ephesians exhorts the readers to rebuke those who perform the works of darkness. This is what Jesus does in the gospel reading that follows. The gospel reading, my dear brothers and sisters, presents the episode of Jesus healing a man born blind. Many doubted whether he was really born blind, even though the man himself and his parents accepted the fact. The disciples of Jesus had a serious doubt whether his blindness was the result of his or his parents' sin. Jesus tried to make it clear that this man would be healed and in the process the glory of God would also be revealed. At one point in verse 15 the Pharisees acknowledge the healing but a question arises regarding the identity of Jesus. Thus Jesus experiences hostility and enmity. After the blind man was healed, some doubted whether it is the same person. What is glaringly clear is that physical blindness could be healed by Jesus. But the metaphorical blindness or the spiritual blindness of the chief priests and the Pharisees could not be healed because of their unbelief. More importantly, the man who experienced healing makes a journey of faith and finally recognizes Jesus and confesses his faith in him. That is the purpose of the sixth sign of Jesus reported in the Gospel of John today. Only the blind man and some Jews chose the right path of spiritual journey. The chief priests and the Pharisees took the opposite direction and went not only away from Jesus but also plotted to kill him. The whole episode continues to happen even today in the world in one or the other way. Do we wish to behave like the chief priests and the Pharisees or like his parents? or choose to behave like the man born blind to confess that Jesus indeed is the one and only Savior who has come to redeem the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.